live on a Friday. Because that's my life. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's see if anyone turns up on a Friday stream. Chances are, no. <laughs> also, because of the game I picked. Which, I'll give Chad a little bit of time to show up. And then I will talk about the game that I've picked. Um, but yes, for everyone that's watching and our VOD watchers, howdy, howdy, howdy. I am your host, Kylie Wild. And today is Frightening Friday, which is where I play scary games on Friday. Bueno. Good to see you, Brent. How are you, Brent? Is everything good over with the what's left, I guess, after the hurricane? <laughs> I hope it's good. Let's see. Let's set that up. Um, but yes. So I have chosen a game called Doki Doki Literature Club. I think most people know that game, but in case you don't, I originally saw the game Grumps play this, and I did not think it was going to be what it became. I don't want to give any spoilers away. <laughs> uh, Brent said, we had a thunderstorm come through last night, but everything seems back to normal today with 90 degree heat. Oh, that's about 30 uh, Celsius. Um, and afternoon showers. Oof. Oofa doofa. Well, I hope the electricity's, you know, back on and, and doing everything it should do. Uh, <laughs> 33. Oh, okay, see, I was close. 33 degrees Celsius. I was close. Um, so, yes. Uh, on the surface, uh, Doki Doki Literature Club seems to be like one of those typical i guess they're japanese dating sims possibly uh oh brent says internet was choppy yesterday oh i hope it's better today um and then come to find out it's not actually a japanese dating sim it does qualify as horror for a reason, but no spoilers. No spoilies. <laughs> in case anyone wants to, to play in the future. Um, okay. Well, it is two minutes after seven. So I think uh, we'll just jump right in. Um, and Brent, if you can, tell me if the volumes are good. Um, cause I have no way of checking and this is weird. Uh, Brett says, I have heard of the game, but never played it. Yeah. Cause like on the surface, it looks very not a game I ever play, <laughs> but there's a twist to it. So hopefully that twist will be very cool. Um, right. Let's try this. Oh, I hope it keeps capturing. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I'm going to see how it looks on my little monitor. On the side. Okay, no, that's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, we good. We good. Let's see if it takes. No, it doesn't. Well, let me. Nope, I'm going to have to use mouse, but that's okay. Um, volume may be a bit low, but that is usual for you. I know. Isn't that crazy? Let me try and bump it up at all. I'll bump up both. But to be fair, I'm not actually hearing any sound yet. So this game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, by playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age. Uh, <laughs> last I checked. Uh, and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. Well, yeah, see, 
you look at this and you think, that's not a horror game. And I'm saying horror. Uh, but apparently there's a twist. So we'll find out. Please enter your name. Oh my gosh, we've got to come up with something. Um... <laughs> I'm a child. Ah! Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. Ah, it sounds like me. Um, the girl is Sayori my neighbor and good friend since we were children you know the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long we used to walk to school together on days like this but starting around high school she would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waiting up but if she's going to chase after me like this I almost feel better off running away however I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Hey! Ha! I overslept again! But I caught you this time! Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. <laughs> you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Poop! Oh yeah, she's doing the finger thing. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Poop. <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh at my own joke. That's really bad. <laughs> have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already. Uh, no, that was me. <laughs> I told you already. I'm really not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Uh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did. In one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about, Sarah likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh -huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? Oh, frick. <laughs> Sounds familiar. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Now, from what I understand, a neat is a person that stays indoors. It's not quite an otaku, but it's like someone who just stays indoors and plays games, I think. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess. I'll promise you that. Whoop. I hit the wrong button. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as, ignored, is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. When I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. Ah! I said Sayori! <laughs> My other word opened up. The S-I-R-I -I word. <laughs> um, I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello! Sayori? Sayori must have come in the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. Uh, you don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. You know what? Well, that you'd come to my club. Sorry. 
Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Eh, Mimi. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning to, as to have planned all of this out. Uh, I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! Crap, I gotta come up with more voices. <laughs> And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Okay, we need a voice. Um... Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? A uh, way to kill the atmosphere. Crap. <laughs> Another voice. Uh, let's see. I've got the Benny Mouse one. I've got the sexy one. I've got the... Uh. Um, ah, poop! What a nice surprise! <laughs> Welcome to the club! All words escape me in this situation. Uh, this club is full of incredibly cute girls! Uh, what are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Uh, sorry. Um, Natsuki. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. Uh, you can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Stop it, Siri! No! <laughs> Not you! <laughs> anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. <laughs> but don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Nitsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? Uh, that's right. <laughs> it's great to see you again, Pooh! Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in school. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me uh, so genuinely uh, feels a little... You too, Monica. Come, sit down, Poop. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them, I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Uh -huh. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. I swear this is supposed to be a horror game. At least that's what they said. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly, match matches, proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Ooh! 
Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! I had no idea you were good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know, just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she's made it herself. <laughs> this is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. What? Why are you thinking me? It's not like I... I haven't heard this somewhere before. I made them for you or anything. Oh gosh, she's a tsundere! <laughs> Uh, I thought you technically did, Sayori said. Well, maybe, but not for you, you know, you dummy. <laughs> all right, all right. I give up. On, I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before set, setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set? Oh, you keep a whole tea set in this classroom? <laughs> Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I... I guess? <laughs> Don't let you get... Don't get intimidated! Yuri's just trying to impress you! Uh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean, you know... I believe you! Well, uh, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I do at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, uh, what made you consider the literature club? Uh, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged, dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... Uh, that, that's okay, don't be embarrassed! Oh crap, she's still like Sayori. We'll make you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Are you leader of the debate club last year? Uh, well, you know, uh, to be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Okay. I lost chat. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Stay there. Uh, let's see. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You can put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. <laughs> you have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. <laughs> you know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees, each with a different voice. Yes! <laughs> Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Poop, um, what kind of things do you like to read? Aha! Uh -huh, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Uh, manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something. <gasps> but she's quiet. Uh, not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? 
I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, oh, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Um, Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. Uh, my favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story is such a, in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah! Okay, Frightening Friday, finally! Ah! I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you? I guess you could say that. Um, but if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often successful, or is very successful at changing the way you look at the world only for a brief moment. Sounds like, uh, Ido. His stuff. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just, uh, Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud! And give that back! <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are! Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? <laughs> well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? <laughs> no! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. <laughs> I guess it's the same for you, Yuri. Ah, uh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now we have a new member. I think it will get us all a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bonds of the club. Isn't that right, Poop? I love that thing. Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club! Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at. And, um, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I, I thought. Hmm. Oop. Uh, huh. You all, um, I, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing points is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Uh, right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. Sari wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Stop it, not Siri. <laughs> Go away. Stop it, Siri. Hey, uh, you really did scare me there for a moment. Uh, if you really came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. 
then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Ah, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone, I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember, tonight's assignment, write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over me one more, once more. Uh, Poop, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Ooh. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Pooh, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to glow, grow closer to at least one of these girls. All right. I just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. I guess it starts with writing a poem tonight. Time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> yes, it's good to see you here, Alu. <laughs> um, let's see. Huh, who are we gonna pick? I like the purple headed girl. So, secretive is good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Here we go. Tragedy. Pain. Tears? Jumpy. She was more about being like scared and stuff. Hello. Oh, no. Wow, I'm really trying to guess these, and I'm not. Depression. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. Uh, existence. Okay. Entropy. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Contamination? Yes. Okay. Melancholy. Oh, that's a terrible one to put in there. I'm gonna do this word. Yes, I picked the right one. Oh, unrequited. Familiar with that word. Um, let's see. Jump. Nope. <laughs> Fear. But she, Yuri said she liked horror stuff. She did like mental health, horror stuff though. I don't know what that word is. Um. Hello, Dinker! Dinker says, Doki Doki, nice! How are you doing this Friday? Intellectual. You can grunt. Finally! Okay, we're done. Uncanny, I think. Who did we write a poem for? Hi again, Poop. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Poop. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. Uh, Dinger says, apologies for lateness, although the window was open. Doing okay, however, my work screwed me over. And oh, okay. I hate to hear that, Danker, because I know that they do that frequently. Well, hopefully you can sit back, relax, and have some fun as I strain my voice doing five different voices. <laughs> Uh, but I do hate that for you. I do. 
Uh, Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Nasuke, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Ah, ah. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki pops herself back down on the street. Seat, not street, seat. Don't worry, guys. Poop always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Poop can become real good friends, too. <laughs> um, Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she has just put me into. Oh! 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 You even brought something today, you know? Wait, Sayori. Huh? Me? Uh, <laughs> not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made, oh, Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Um, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Uh, hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Uh, is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted uh, this is uh, how is this girl accidentally being so cute she even picked out a book she thinks i'll like despite me not reading much <laughs> yuri thank you i'll definitely read this i enthusiastically take the book phew well you can read it at your own pace i look forward to hearing what you think now that everyone's settled in i expect monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club but that doesn't seem to be the case Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book, and I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, uh, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking after her. She sneaks one another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. <sighs> but that only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. <laughs> but I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have... Oh, no, that's poop. <laughs> Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, <laughs> well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, no, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? Uh, what's it about, anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. 
And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter who she, no matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Poop? Uh, no, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri was into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside. But her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So, I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please, stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. <laughs> that's... well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Ah, uh, let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. Uh, that's... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not that I don't want you to. It's just that something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. <sighs> All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon, understood, I soon understood what Yuri meant about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Ah, uh, sorry. I was just... Uh, Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Uh, <laughs> here, uh, this should work, right? I slide my desk up until it's against hers, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold open the book. Uh, I guess this makes it kind of difficult to turn a page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. Wow, this horror game is wild. Uh, that way... I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Um, are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. That's a metallic song. Uh, sorry! I think I got a bit distracted for a second. <laughs> I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. Um, you're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Ha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. 
my thumb gently letting go over the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but uh, the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all of her things that she says and does, like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, <laughs> but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. M but Poop, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing, you think that- Wait, 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 I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? Hi. Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share our today's poems with each other. Uh, we might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's, it's not, it's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right, I guess I'll do some reading tonight then. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Ah, uh, I, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. <laughs> hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. <laughs> Hello, Nana. Nana said, oh God, it's this game. Yes, and I'm doing all different voices and it's killing me inside. Um, <laughs> but how are you tonight, Nana? Uh, let's see. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? Um, that's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right, I stand up. I take a mental note of where I left off in the book then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, my relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? Uh, <laughs> Princess, you'd be a good D&D game master with all these voices. I actually used to be one in high school. A little tiny group. I have not played D&D in probably that long. I can't wait! Sayori and Monica pull out their points. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting for where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, Yuri, of course. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. Uh, let's see. No! Have not gotten an ending yet. Uh, let's see. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Uh, what was that? D did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Oh, he's going to hate me. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Uh, that's... I... I guess you're right. But what am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. Uh... uh yes. I, I'm so glad to hear that Brent's back to... <laughs> Brent's back to normal. Also, where he lives is back to normal. <laughs> what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicate you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Oh, well, I know that. I just meant, uh, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, 
Okay, and this is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they try to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, and that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased how? <laughs> um, well, uh, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Uh, do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if it's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Okay. I can't read that. Let's see. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calms breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. <laughs> what? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it, it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. Ha! Just like me! He's like me for real. I actually think your handwriting's pretty. Oh? Uh, that's a relief. Also, I like the point. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Let's see. Nana says, also for the game, Kylie, I would recommend the mature content work. Oh! Right! I shall turn that on then. I didn't know. Uh, let's do that. Uh, is it there? I think it's there that I do that. Uh, let's see. Mature rated. Oh! It's not letting me choose it. Will it do that? No. That's weird. Hmm. I think it's automatically... Uh, doing the thingy. <laughs> that was very scientific of me. The thingy. Um, yes. Unless, Nana, I don't know if you, as you're a mod, I don't know if you have permission, but if you can figure it out, that would be aces. All the aces. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all, Poop. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, uh, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. <laughs> it's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm really going to keep doing my best for you, Poop. Ah, uh, me too. Okay.
Okay, who's next? Mm, I think Monica. I say Monica. Hi, Poop. Having a good time so far? Yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I will keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Poop. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. <laughs> Great job, Poop! I was gonna oh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. Yes, she said underestimated. <laughs> It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. <laughs> that way, it always counts when I put in some effort. Ah, <laughs> that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's so full of energy and symbolism. <laughs> Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. That's very challenging to write like that effectively. But allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances! It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. Never really asked though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It can take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I will always help you find that suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or something. Uh oh, she's going into Natsuki's voice. <laughs> anyway. Do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas are already scorched with the permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what did you think? Hmm, it's, uh, freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ha, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been emphasis on, have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. Well, what was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say that I kind of had a kind of epiphany, epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about these stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway... Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tie it up later. Another way to think about it is this. 
If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hands and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. All right. Natsuki or Sayori? I guess Sayori. This is a good point, Poop. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course, it's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right, but that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you wrote this one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Ah, <laughs> well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See, it's like I said before, Poop. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this uh, means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my point too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you go through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, waking me. Rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you testing me? To wish the right way a rainy day. I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Sayori, this is just a guess. Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Uh, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. Ha! <laughs> I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. Uh, it came out nice, or how should I put it? Uh, it sounds just like you. Really? Yes. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. Uh, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, but next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Well, all that's left is Natsuki. The Sundari. Uh, Poop, if you're not gonna take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh? What, you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put an effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Urgh. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. To each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. Um, but isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? 
Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but uh, it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. Right, so you did. I guess more went into this than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Don't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Or you didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah. Guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Nasuki is feeling proud, then I won't take it away from her. Whew, I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I had anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my me mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poem stands up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's why I, what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Uh, um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns to the poem to the desk, or returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about feeling of the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I, I know that. I just meant uh, the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? Huh? You mean you have to try it that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. I pooped it too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. And Poop liked my point too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, that's not what I... Uh, yeah, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Poop appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? Uh, no. If I was full of myself... I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as poop started showing up. Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This poem doesn't involve you. I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Poop. She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If I could get, if she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making all of your poems convoluted for no reason? That meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Poop. Wait, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to co oh, convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Poop? Ah. Uh, well? Mm -hmm. How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. Whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Well, of course. 
We're gonna agree with Yuri. Natsuki. You're right. I did like your poem. See? Wait! That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not ha what happens at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri. Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it. And it becomes something really personal. And that's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that. I... I'm sorry. Oof. But, Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should, too? <clears throat> Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, <laughs> nobody has taken her side. She's trapped at this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. All right, fine. I end up even feeling bad for her. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. So she doesn't need to, you know what? I'm gonna do that. <laughs> It'll spare me from having to look at all of your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumbles up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki. She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handle it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right. I believe you. Thanks, Poop. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you a part of this club now. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Ha! Huh. Um, well, never mind that. I, I'm gonna go make some tea. Good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Poop, how about you? Uh, yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat, it was a neat thing to talk about it with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing again tomorrow. And uh, maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit about the kinds of poems everyone likes. <laughs> Pylord! Hello, Pylord! Did someone say mature content? Sort of. If there is, we haven't even gotten near it. <laughs> Supposedly, this is a horror game. So far, it's been about writing poems and picking up chicks. Uh, with any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Poop! Ready to walk home? Sure. Let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It's truly been a while since Sayori and I've spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori. Oh, no. <clears throat> Sorry, that's me. Uh, Sayori. Uh, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? <gasps> no, no, no. Uh, that's really the first time I've ever seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You you don't hate them, do you? Oh, no, no, I don't hate them. 
I, I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Ha, phew. You know, Poop, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's, <laughs> uh, every day is gonna be so much fun. Ugh. Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Well, we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, uh, let's do this. Uh, Nana says, it becomes a horror game at a certain point. Okay, so we're still trying to hook up with Yuri here. I have to pick the words that Yuri would like. Ah! Nope. Okay. Okay. Essence. Okay. Melancholy? Yes! Philosophy. Hmm, uncontrollable? Oh, we did it! Uh, secretive. Ha! <laughs> uh, misfortune, nope. An ending? Yes! Yes! Um, unrestrained. answer um to nana said it becomes a horror game at a certain point <laughs> my lord said presumably right after the wedding that's when things usually turn bad <laughs> ah very good um let's see fantasy nope destiny yes uh intellectual is it unrequ no sensation of the arts after image and imagination another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past few days entering the club room the usual scene greets me hey poop yo Sayori looks like you're in a good mood today <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club that's all I see that's a pretty simple thing to get it, you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I, oh no, that's her. I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Uh, that, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Uh, why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just wanted to look at it. Ah. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it! I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh, Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was even listening in. Her face is in the book, as always. Ah, uh -huh. I, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Poop to let me borrow some money. That's, uh, don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, 
After pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough, Retribution. Ah, uh, did I just... I I didn't mean that. I, I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. Ah, uh, that's... Uh, there's no way you can think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the resolution. Ret res retribution. Still, no, still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Ah, but, but, but uh, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Oh, what was... Eh? Uh, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sorry, glances around. It, is this a miracle? Is it because I paid my restitution? Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcake. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ha-ha! <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! Hm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. I burnt my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over there. Just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do, I think, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I am really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sorry gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Tsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um, Sayori, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. <laughs> Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. <laughs> of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Uh, you don't think she... She has a... Uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh, Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Uh, heh, uh, boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Yeah, this is Monica totally isn't suspicious. Yes. Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. Uh, huh, what held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You wouldn't have heard the you would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I always just went to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's, uh, -huh. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. I said so. In that case, I won't let you down, poop. Monica smiles sweetly. Ha, ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd love the chance to share once I'm ready. 
I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki despaired into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Ah, <clears throat> uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we'd been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, that's the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Um, do you mind if I make some tea first? No, not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that I, that, if there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts with her speaking mannerisms, uh, especially because of her long legs. <sighs> Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Oh, uh, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Uh, yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Uh, where are you two off to? Uh, we're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain that to Monica. Uh, we're just filling the water pitcher? Uh, okay. Sorry, I was just a little bit curious. Is that kind of a one-person job, isn't it? Uh, that's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to tell you there's something wrong with helping? Uh, or do you want to, to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve poop in club activities? Uh, my mouth gapes. Ah, uh, I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. And then let's go, poop. Ah, uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. Uh, how could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that, it, it made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, uh, I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Poop. How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is bad, as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns like a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Uh, um, Yuri lifts her head. Poop, I really like being friends with you. Ah, uh, thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah, shall we go? Yes. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. I'm still waiting for the horror to start. <laughs> Poop. Do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yes. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. I hope that, that's a lot. I hope that's Fahrenheit. Now it's time to get the teapot. Uh, you really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be more impressed. Perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? Uh, I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Aha! That's great, Yuri! 
Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Poop. That's very endearing. And that's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Poop, I, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back up against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Sorry, didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... Uh, my... Uh, your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since it will go well with tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. <laughs> Princess is reading posture a thing? I don't think so. <laughs> At least I've never encountered that. Our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression. And I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Oh, that's... That's okay. I, I won't take any. Are, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the page. You're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. <laughs> no need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? You sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on the top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here! I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just that, that. Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. D did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Ah, uh, um, poop. S sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. No, uh, that's... Well, y you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yes, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has really gotten tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that she can't even focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. That's right, I said breaths. I raise my arm. Ah, uh, like before. Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! Uh, 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 uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems! Poop, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. 
Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much to worry between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Who should I show my poem to first? I'm going to say Yuri. And then chat if you want to decide who we show it to after Yuri. We will do that. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Poop. This one might even be better than yesterday's. How'd you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you what kind of techniques were worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. <laughs> even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I, I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone so motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself, and besides, People would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? <laughs> Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could have say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently. So my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I fill myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. <laughs> That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using this poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express what it feels like for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing and people would only make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Poop? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Poop. 
that's exaggerating a little. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's, it's nothing really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. In just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Okay, who should we show our poem to next? Do you have a preference chat? We've got Sayori, Natsuki, and Monica. Uh, <laughs> Pile horse says nutsack. Okay, nutsack it is. Hmm. Well, I can admit it's better than the last one. It seems it's nice to see you're putting in some effort. <laughs> Natsuki, damned autocorrect. Uh huh. Sure. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's gonna just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stopped short all of a sudden. D don't, don't tell me. Huh? You're not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know, Yuri would love this kind of, this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean, I, I mean, ah, looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Nasuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Oh, wow, so we didn't even read her poem. Holy crap. Ah. Nope, I have to get affiliate, Nana. And I'm so close. So close. I think I've got 32, I think. Uh, let's see, we got Sayori and Monika. Oh man, I just realized why you were saying that, Nana. That would have been perfect to do a poll. Uh, heads. Sayori, Sayori, two for Sayori. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, I like this one, Poop. It has some really nice feelings in it. I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not as sure that's exactly how it works. Again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aww, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. Yeah, but you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try and keep it in mind. Whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy points. Wait, sometimes I like sad points too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and s Oh, happy and sad. I can't see you like something sad, liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud over your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. 
Wow, Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Poop! I should go write that down then. You can read my point now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave. Discovering secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through me at my front door, my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the top between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts! And shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay, she's nuts. Holy crap. Sayori, did, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best book ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot! And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that! It's almost kind of creepy. <laughs> creepy? Well, oh, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing till I die. Okay, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori Say Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something. Uh, before dropping it, no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Monica is left. Hi again, Poop. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> You never know. Wanna show you what you wrote for me today? Sure, here you go. I give my point to Monica. All right, this one's good. I feel like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside of her. Aha! Uh -huh. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not! I just know that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that? You must be pretty into her! Huh? You, no, completely misunderstood. Ahaha, <laughs> calm down, I'm kidding! Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, fictional one anyway. <laughs> Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want 
map by now? I like by this one turned out. I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Speaking, scratching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, 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 I, I never said that. I, it's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space in the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I read the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. By putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you, Monica. Okay, wait, how do I go back to the game? Oh, shit. I don't know how to go back. Oh, return. <laughs> that would be the word I was looking for. I saved it. You never know. You might change your mind. I want something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today! Thanks for listening! Okay, everyone! We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit in front of the room. <sighs> is this about the festival? Well, sort of. <sighs> do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can't put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much! We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori's been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets! We give out to the bed! Uh, okay, that's great and all, but does, that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're gonna be performing! Performing? Uh, um, Monica. Yeah, we're gonna have a poetry performance. He's just gonna choose point for a the event. But the cool part is, we also get to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting in all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Aren't you kidding me, Monica? You did, you did, you, you did already start putting this poster up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for, th sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I'm still waiting for the horror to start. Is the horror the stage fright? <laughs> I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, I still think we should give it our best! We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event, each put on a performance, then we'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be to able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. 
And it's about those reasons that, oh wait, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes staying in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think Sayori and Monica have been really trying hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right! Yeah. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move to the main event! I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to recite it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start it off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course! Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. With that voice, is this something she's done before, or she's simply unnatural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes her rec recitation. The four of us applaud. No! Stop it. Uh, Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. You ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Oh! Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It, it's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transformed into sharp silvers of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she is bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I am the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. That's not that we don't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next in. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Uh, Try not to think of it when you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, okay. Sayori so begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori's is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. 
It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes. And we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> and Poop liked it. I guess it's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be in the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that soft, gentle you know, delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. <laughs> it's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time for the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki. <laughs> Don't make me go before Poop. It's not like I can compare you to you guys anyway. Might as well let Poop lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. <sighs> Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. It's not like I have a much of a selection of what to read. I'll just go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will prove over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuke. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, why are you all looking at me? Because you're present, oh, that's Monica. Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. <coughs> Sorry. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well, um, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean... Doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put whatever face I want on for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is. So, well, I guess if that's the case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That's dead. I want to thank everyone for coming, though. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it is like now. Make sure you pick up poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let's know, let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It's not to be on your own. I mean, to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah. No problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write points for tomorrow as well. So they're working out really nice so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we're finishing planning. We'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I, I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica. But I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Oh. <laughs> Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two. Always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it be a little nice though well ah uh, how am i supposed to respond to that 
It's okay, Poop. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Whew. Okay. Yes. I think we're going to call it there when I figure out how to switch back to live see. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, it didn't really get to the horror part. So if you guys want, I can continue this next Friday. <laughs> My voice is killing me. That was five voices, five different voices. And I don't even talk to humans in the daytime. <laughs> but no, it says, can't wait for it. Good, okay. We will continue this next Friday. I'm still stuck in this character. <laughs> oh my gosh, like legitimately, it is like, oh. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I really did, actually. It's not, it didn't get to the scary part yet, but that's okay. I was like really into it. It was fun, it's fun, it's fun. Um, and yes, this is my kind of like little plea at the end I am trying to make affiliate uh, if you know of any friends just send them my name just say hey let's let's watch Kylie Wilde she's kind of weird she does the goofy things <laughs> um, and that's, we had a lot of fun over here um, but Thank you, Nana. Nana says, we will get you to affiliate. I hope so. You guys are so amazing. And everyone that has uh, followed in the last few days, and it has been a pretty good little chunk of you guys, I just cannot express how thankful I am to you for that. Um, wow, my voice is really going. But that was so fun. I really enjoyed that. Because I got to be like some arrogant dude. And and then the like Marilyn Monroe girl. <laughs> That's fun. Um, but yes, so I have some really cool games picked out for next week. Um, I might not be on at the weekend because I have some plans, actually. Me. Plans? What? I'm leaving the house? What? But yes. Uh, and yes, those plans might involve Wolverine and Deadpool. Um, but Monday. Which one is it? Yeah. Monday. I have the coolest game I've seen in a long time. It is a detective noir FPS. You may have heard it of it. It's kind of trending right now. Fallen Aces. I'm really looking forward to that. And then uh, on Wednesday, which is our weird game Wednesday, I'll be playing something called The Unturned. It's a weird one. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nana says, if Pete needs a co-host for the podcast, let me know. I need to talk to Pete. Um, I might be back in time for, for uh, rap reviews on Sunday because it's at 7. But, I, yeah. <laughs> Poor Pete. He messages me and I don't reply. <laughs> I am terrible about replying to messages. Uh, and I do apologize about that to anyone who's ever messaged me ever in the history of ever. Um... I'm just bad at it. <laughs> but, uh, but I do hope everyone enjoyed tonight. Um, it was so much fun. And I lost my train of thought, but that's okay. I always do. Uh, <laughs> but you guys have been amazing. And you always bring a smile to my face. Today was a bit rough for me. I just had this like rough patch that hit me about an hour before I started streaming. And like out of nowhere... And I was like, oh no, you know, am I going to get up enough energy for the stream tonight? And then I got here and then you guys just showed up and were awesome and were hilarious. You cracked me up and you're just amazing and awesome. What more can I say? Except I can say one more thing. And I say it every day, every time I stream. And I mean it as much as I, I mean it just as much every time. Which is, you could choose to spend your time with literally any freaking body in the whole 8 billion population world. 
the fact that you choose to spend your time with little old nothing me ain't no lie it means the world to me you guys mean the world to me i love this it was a great one i can't wait to do part two assuming it's two parts uh <laughs> Maybe three. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to go rest my voice because it's really hurting right now. <laughs> and I should probably eat. I haven't eaten today, so I should probably do that. Um, but you guys have been amazing. This has been a great night. I hope you have a great rest of the night. If I don't talk to you at the weekend, I hope you have a great weekend. And I will see you Monday at 7 p.m. on UK time. <sighs> Bye.